So we're going to try this again. Welcome to Stuck with Kadem and Kadis. So last time we had some technical difficulties. That's why we called the episode Technical Difficulties. Yeah, technically um, speaking. Yeah, so basically we were dealing with some issues. If you read the description, you would know. If you were too lazy to read the description, we fucking recorded it and it sounded weird. We were kind of hearing like reverb and delay, most likely because there was two microphones. I've tried to talk to other people to help me out, some engineers who know what they're doing and stuff, uh, but even they were kind of lost because, you know, they weren't here to see it themselves, and technology is a bitch. That's enough explaining that. Let's get into the motherfucking show. Yes. So, happy Thanksgiving! Hey. That's why we got this oh, little cool something here. Speaking of Thanksgiving. Oh. Uh, let me just fucking get right into the show. I'm thankful. Tobacco. Amen. Okay, so um, the first way that we started the last episode was with a word. So um, yeah, figured why not keep the consistency going for as long as we can before we get bored. And with that being said, the word you've never heard. Oh, what was that word? I say we keep saying word you've never heard, but what then I wrote it? word you never heard, oh, and now I'm trying to figure out like. Which one is it? Word you've never heard. You've never so heard. So let's that. add a VE to that. My word I just learned today is. Mm, oh, <laughs> that's a perfect reason for me to go first. So go my ahead, word <laughs> is logolepsy. Logolepsy. Logolepsy, I'm pretty sure. Which actually is, we should have had this in the first episode, the fascination or the obsession of words. What is it? Logolepsy. Logolepsy, so we, we're suffering from logolepsy. Like epilepsy, but like for words. I'm like, God, words are amazing. <laughs> That's fucked up. Okay, I'm not even gonna. <laughs> well, my word is Meliagris Galapavo. Meliagris Galapavo. It's two separate words. And it's actually the scientific name oh, no. for a wild turkey. Oh. So annoying. <laughs> there you go. Now you guys know when you go to the dinner table, you go, wow, this is some wonderful Meliagris Galapavo. Okay. Did you know? No way. So mine is actually pretty, pretty fucking cool. So I don't know if you want me to go first. because it's, it's Mine really is pretty cool too. Okay. Is it just a fact? Does yours it's just have a, very a video attached to no. it? No. So go first. Okay. So mine is the word thanks and where it's rooted from. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that was pretty cool for this okay, episode. Mine has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay, see? <laughs> the word thanks actually is rooted from the word think. So when you would give thanks, it was not thanks, yeah, you would say thank. Yeah. And thank was the past term for thought. Like I thought of you. I thank of you. So nowadays, we say, I think about you a lot. So in that way, we would say, I thank you. Okay. I have heard that before, and I'm not lying. Sometimes, you know, you hear things, you forget it, you hear it again, and you go, I've heard that before. <laughs> that doesn't make you a know-it-all, okay? <laughs> we are know-it-alls, but I really genuinely mean I rem I've heard it. But Isn't that, that amazing that you can think of something and then forget about it? And then somebody just reminds you real quick? And you're just like, oh my oh, gosh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so my fact is random, but it's cool because it has a video attached to okay. it. Okay. Um, Hopefully I could attach a video. I have no idea how to do that in the yeah. editing process. Okay, so maybe it doesn't have a video attached to it. I think it does. I think it does. <laughs> We're not doing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> Apparently, or should I say apparently, uh, <laughs> people thought that parrots or birds that were related to parrots were the only animals that could technically keep rhythm because they thought that one of the necessities to keep rhythm would be uh, vocal mimicking. Birds can mimic us, therefore they can keep a rhythm if, you know, they're singing a song. Like, obviously they're keeping some sort of rhythm in their head, right? But they have found an animal that technically can also do the same thing. Apparently it's a sea lion, which is the other Isn't that seal. like a seal? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, which I searched up, I was like, is a sea lion a seal? Because now I'm like looking at it, I'm like, seal. 
<laughs> See line. No, they're not. They're they're different things, but they're very similar. So these these guys at this fucking research center were testing this sea lion with a metronome. And they were just basically playing this metronome over and over. And then they, of course, would feed it treats, just like you would do to uh, teaching a dog a new trick. And, you know, it would be doot, 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 doot. So he's going like that, right? And then they started fucking playing music and this motherfucker's keeping the rhythm to the music. So they kind of determined... Well, there is yeah. another mammal. There's a uh, another mammal because birds aren't mammals. I'm pretty, pretty sure they're birds. You know? Are they not? Because you have sure, to like right breathe there. air, right? To be they don't <laughs> breathe no, air. No, no. I was going to say, you have to breathe air to be a mammal. So does that mean they're mammals too? I think so. Or are they, they are the only other mammal that can keep a beast other than a seal. No, other than <laughs> Maybe seals can't keep a beat, but what they've realized is that the sea lions do. You know, it's it's crazy. It's was, it was really fucking funny. Pretty cool. Um, good to know that uh, I can make a band with some sea lions. Yeah, so you can jam out band with them. them. Yep. The sea lion man. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. So, mm, oh, I already said my. Did you know? See, I'm high as fuck. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I know what time it is. It's time for me to tell a joke. Oh boy, as your dad. Daddy, All right. Don't. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hatch. Hatch who? Bless you. That was it. <laughs> That's it? That's the best you can come up with? Oh, I thought it was great. That... Come on. <laughs> Hatch who? Bless you. God bless you. <laughs> okay. What more do you want from a dad joke? All right, well, mine is this. Imagine if you walked into a bar and there was a long line of people waiting to take a swing at you. Okay. That's the punchline. <laughs> okay. So, it's time to talk about some music. You want to go first? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Are we going to mention the same thing? <laughs> I highly doubt that. Yeah? I would be shocked. Mine is Eye to Eye by Tevin Campbell. I'm done. Yep. We about to bring it back, baby. Eye to Eye! I felt it. Okay. Um, uh, but that song is amazing. You got a goofy movie. An amazing movie. It's the 80s. Dude, there was something about Disney music. They weren't just creating songs that were going to appeal to children. Like, they were like, nah, we're going to make a... Oh, yeah, we're going to make a song for Disney? That shit going to be popping. Back then, they cared that adults were watching these films, too. It's the same thing with uh, cartoons. If you look back at the cartoons, early 2000s, 90s, and cartoons seemed to be about real people with real issues. If you watch Rugrats, the fucking parents are spot on what real parents in their thirties are like. And it's, it's actually incredible because when your kid is watching it, you're also getting to enjoy the dialogue that the kid doesn't give a fuck about because really at the end of the day, all the kid cares about is the colors and the right. babies and it all is one giant thing to them. But for us, we really fucking hear the music. We really hear the dialogue. We really, and nowadays the fucking cartoons are just balls to the wall nonsense. These new cartoons these days, are definitely catering more to psychedelics, which is kind of strange. Yeah, which I can understand that. Yes, you know, but, for, for our, the sake. but our cartoons didn't. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Our cartoons didn't. They, they didn't, didn't even have that. to. Yeah. We didn't need yeah. to be all like, ooh, third eye Illuminati. Like, we didn't need that. We were like very happy with just a show about Music. kids being Bye -bye. kids. Yeah. And actually, if you want to talk about Rugrats, man, that is a great scoring done for that show, and that was done by Devo. Uh, Devo. Whip it into shape. Whip it good. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> okay, so my uh, my song. I'm surprised. I actually texted you earlier, and I texted you. Remember, we can only do songs. Don't pick an album because I was pretty damn sure you were gonna talk about this album. I'm actually shocked that you didn't. Um, Wait. Before you continue, I have to mention that Rosie Gaines was featured on that song by Tevin Campbell. Eye to eye. Continue. 
Why? Just for the sake of Just credit. for the sake of Rosie Gaines, man. She yeah. was, I do what? Was that who the one that was? Rosie like, Gaines. Okay. I don't know who Tevin or Rosie is, so. My name's Kevin, okay? I've never met anybody named Tevin. I've met Devons. That's like finding somebody named Tenny. <laughs> All right, so you're saying which song? Okay. My song, actually, I'll say the album first. An Evening with Silk. Silk. <laughs> I was going to do that. That's so funny. And it just, it is an incredible nine song album. It was a lot of fun to listen to. One of my favorite songs on the album was, uh, uh, after last night, I'm sorry, I don't usually stutter, but to do it to me. I fucking love that part. Zapp and Rogers ask, it was beautiful. The Thundercat. Thunder, don't even get me started. I mean, you know exactly what you're doing when you're working with these guys, and you know exactly what you're doing when your music sounds like that of Zapp and Rogers or fucking Marvin Gaye or anything of that nature, these dudes are bringing soul back. Mm -hmm. So check out that album. Shout out to Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. Those guys are an amazing pack. So let's get into the uh, movie. I think they so all you, you told me, which is funny. You texted me. Hey, try to like incorporate Thanksgiving, which is funny because as you texted me that, I was writing this movie down and I was like, should I mention it? And I was like, I did just see it. I, I, I did was just see it because of Thanksgiving. See, and I was trying to figure out what the hell is a Thanksgiving movie. I'll tell you right now. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Got so on. it's uh, starring Steve Martin, okay. John Candy, right? Uh, I think it's 1987, I believe. Uh, something like that. It's an endearing film. It's charming. It's classic. There's a lot of cliches in it, but I think that adds to its charm. John Candy obviously adds to its charm. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch, but the reason that I wanted to bring up the movie specifically, uh, other than the fact that it's probably the only like real Thanksgiving movie, the story is that Steve Carell just wants to fucking get home to his wife on Thanksgiving. And it's just one of those movies where he just can't get home. It's like every, uh, everything something is, always gets in the you way. You know, one of the scenes really fucking shocked me. Because I saw before I watched the movie, it said rated R. I didn't think that this movie was ever rated R. And the whole time I'm watching it, the beginning of the movie starts, and I'm like watching, I'm like, I don't understand where this went. I'm like waiting for somebody to just like flash their tits. <laughs> Back R. then though, that was like PG-13. No, uh, what happens is Steve Carell, and I'm not- Steve Carell, Steve, Steve Martin. <laughs> What happens is Steve Martin walks into a car rental place at one point, and I'm not really trying to spoil anything. As soon as I saw the scene, I was like, oh my God, this is fucking iconic. No pun intended, because that's what I'm about to get into. He just starts saying fuck a million times in that oh. one scene. And I think this might have been probably the the, a record breaker yes, at the time. I think that's what I've heard. You could say it was a train of fucks. It was just really interesting not just because you're seeing it, but just because it was Steve Martin. I was like, holy shit. Like, he's really got, like, it was great. It was it was great watching Steve Martin saying, give me my fucking this right fucking now. I'm fucking sick of this fucking shit. I think the, the entire film is kind of worth watching just for that one scene. But um, I would definitely suggest it just because it is the holiday season, but it was fun to watch. Cool. So, um, my movie that I chose was, and it was bound to be mentioned, so I figured I'd just get it out of the way. Burn After Reading. I, <laughs> you don't understand. Before I picked Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, that was the movie that popped into my head. <laughs> and I swear to God, I said, Kenny's probably going to say that movie today. We got to be careful, because we like a lot of similar things. But yes, one of my favorite comedy movies of all time, um, it's a recent- We should just drop the sample right what here. What the fuck is this? <laughs> anyway, so Burn After Reading is one of my favorites because you have not only grade A actors, but like the like sexiest men ever grade A actors. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're both fools. <laughs> like, absolute. The absolute doofuses. morons. It's fucking brilliant. You got George Clooney. You have Brad Pitt. Yeah, um, already. Like, already. Yes. 
This kind of a little dark. under the radar, this movie. Yeah. Actually, it is surprising how under the radar the movie is. It's underrated. The only reason I know about it was because of a good friend of mine who told, told us to watch a shout out to Ben Gorski. Fuck you, Ben. Oh. How you don't you, get credit. How dare you? End you don't. Up on you our don't. Podcast. No. You don't try to take the shine from our podcast. Unbelievable. Right? You go back to where you belong. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did something <laughs> fall? Uh, that's that's... Moment. I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's my reason behind the movie. Uh, oh, and then I didn't even mention J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons and. John Malkovich. John Malkovich. <laughs> Motherfucking John Malkovich. Bro. Being John Malkovich was a great movie as well. Not my favorite. I love Burn After Reading way more than being John Malkovich. But we're not talking about being John Malkovich. We're talking about Burn After Reading, which is just fucking hilarious. Oh, if you yeah. haven't seen it, oh my God, it's one of the best dark comedies I've ever seen in my life. It is I mean, so it's well written. So well written, so loopy. You're like, constantly like on the edge of your seat like what the hell is going to happen next yeah. and the ending is classic pretty, pretty classic. well worth it all right so let's move on what in the world <laughs> is happening in what the, the world fuck is, is this? this no you can't do the sample it's <laughs> redundant i should like do it put them on top of each other yeah. oh, that time. would be good that would actually, it, I wonder if you got the timing right. Yeah, maybe we'll see. There was somebody, I think this case is settled now, but this happened. So this person was arrested for 43 cents and then they were charged a felony. What? And they served seven days in jail because he walked away with a Mountain Dew. Actually, this happened in Harrisburg. Wow. Yeah, right around the corner from us. Two hours away from us. He grabbed the bottle, slapped two dollars on the counter, and walked out. What he didn't know was a single bottle was two twenty nine, not one dollar and fifty cents, which he thought. It oh, was. so he just placed it down and walked out. Yeah, the store called the police, right. so he got locked up. Another similar story um, that I found funny was. And it kind of ties into nostalgia, which we're in love with, clearly. Right. There was an Oklahoma woman that was charged with a felony for not returning a VHS tape. 21 years it took. And so it accumulated so much in the system that they sent out a, fel uh, uh, a felony. They sent they out sent a, a felony, felony. door house. <laughs> we just got a letter. We just got a I wonder dun, who dun, it's from. Dun, dun, dun. It just opens up. It's just like, ding, goes up to the screen. It's just like a cop a like. <laughs> <laughs> with the little thing oh his, no it's like a it's on his, it's on the his state lips. trooper it's on his the lips. fucking hat <laughs> looking like fucking bullwinkle you know right? Right? rocky and bullwinkle don't they have that outfit or am i bugging something like that oh uh, like the, the villain or whatever has that no <laughs> no he's like kind of like a like somebody's a yeah <laughs> So Oklahoma woman <laughs> facing a felony for a VHS tape. She didn't spend any time in jail as far as I know. You know what's cool is that yours is about money and mine is about money. It's always about money. In Mexico, Missouri, this actually took me a while to figure out because it was saying Mexico man and then I was reading Missouri. Florida man. No, and then I was reading Missouri man. No, apparently, and I still might be wrong, but there's a Mexico, Missouri. So this guy's from Mexico, Missouri. He wanted to remain anonymous, and this just happened recently. Uh, the article was posted on the 15th of November. For the last five years, he played the same numbers on the lottery. For how many years? He says four or five years. And because of that, ended up winning recently $98,000. Numbers. I would assume he had some algorithm in his head, because that's what I've heard with these scratch-offs is it is in a sense an algorithm and this algorithm is given out ever so often. And if you do it right, there's like a way to actually play your numbers that's kind of mathematical. So I've heard, I don't know if that's true. Okay, well I found the article and I wanna find the numbers that he played. Cause maybe you should play them right now. <laughs> I was gonna say, everyone together. Keep playing them every day for the next five years. Yeah. Okay, here they are. Write these numbers down. <laughs> 10, 12, 19, 28, 33. Oh, he shit. Just, I think I just called the cops. Oh. You actually made my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look at that. You know, won $98,000. So, they asked him, what does he plan to do with that money? He said, keep playing the lottery. <laughs> he said, pay my credit card bills. Dito. You know what? I give you credit. All right. So, uh, what's next? What's next? Psalm said. How much is seeing this shit wrong? Someone once said, 
Life would be tragic if it weren't funny. Tragic. Stephen Hawking said that. Interesting that a man with who was st could still look at the life and find it really funny. Yeah. Very pretty profound. People that are very smart tend to be very cynical. Ooh. And cynicism does go hand in hand with comedy. Well, rest in peace, Stephen Hawking. I didn't know he died. I thought he was like um, Jimmy Carter, you know, he's like still going. Yeah, shot. still going. <laughs> still going. It's I, like 97. Is Jimmy Carter still alive? Yes. Okay, I, I know he was, but I mean, you don't know. I like know 20, he was. I know it was like 20 to nine. Like, I'm just saying, he, we just went through 2020. Jimmy yeah. Carter made it through 2020? Mm hmm I don't know. 20. 97, I just look, looked it up. Really? Like, just now. A couple days oh, okay. ago. Okay. 97 wow. years old. Congratulations, Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Hope, hope to see 98. Yeah. He should run for president again. He only did a four-year term. Why not? We only hire old men. Oh, let's not get into politics. <laughs> Someone said, behind every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. Jim Carrey. No matter how <laughs> scary, like... Joseph Stalin or like there's this woman like they're just like <laughs> whatever Adolf. let's not get into that well um, then let's talk about some urban legends then oh it's a nice time to get into that yeah because now I'm getting a little spooked out <laughs> we said phenomenons last time it could be phenomenons it could be urban legends it could be whatever the fuck we want it to be hell we could call this phenomenons now and now yeah, it's this guy calls it urban legends and it starts talking about him He's playing baseball in his dreams, and I'm like, hey, I've never heard this urban legend. It's, <laughs> it's an urban legend of Cadis. Mine is a Thanksgiving one. I figured to keep up the spirit. I didn't know this, but apparently Thanksgiving used to be a lot like Halloween. It was known as like Thanksgiving masking, where people would go out dressed up. It was not like door to door trick or treating, but you would go door to door and like sing caroling to people, kind of like Christmas. So it's like Christmas mixed with Halloween and Thanksgiving. It's the yeah. holiday. You know what it was? Is that they? You know, I know what it was. <laughs> it was way past Halloween, and it was right before Christmas. But niggas wanted to celebrate. Yeah, they was just like so. They ran out with their masks, they were like creepy ass masks, yeah. and then they were just. Uh, <laughs> it's beginning to it's look like, uh, <laughs> like Christmas. Apparently, guys. Jingle Bells is a Thanksgiving song. Yes. There yes. you go. So, there you go. So that's a good reason as to see. They I, went up to your door on Thanksgiving like Jingle, jingle Bells. bells yeah. Jingle oh no no no. Bells. They just had like white bags over their head and shit. Kids used to dress so creepy back then. Yeah, people used to do that. It was also known as Ragamuffin Day. Okay. Um, which I guess. Which the reason why is because they would all dress up as like homeless people. It was a very common costume. But then, now we're going to get to the urban legends part. I didn't know this was going to get dark. Uh -huh. I mean, it got pretty dark when it said children were dressing up as homeless yes, people. Yes. Jingle gets bells, <laughs> jingle bells. That's like, where it kind of gets a little dark. But then, you actually had real homeless people going to your house to steal your Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. And possibly do, like, worse things. The like, Thanksgiving Grinches. Like, apparently, like, kill people and rape people and oh, stuff. Jesus. Like, yeah, some terrible things. I don't know if this is true, but again knows while you sit at home tonight and you see somebody outside with a cart lock like, your door <laughs> you it's so fucked up now actually go actually, out there yeah. hand them some food yes and please. tell them jesus loves them yes okay. help the homeless today help the homeless tomorrow and especially on thanksgiving stop fucking dressing up as homeless people right? <laughs> my urban legend uh so we're gonna do urban legends first and then we're gonna jump into nostalgia whatever okay i'm just so, going with the punches all right so my urban legend I wanted to go with something that was related to us because I found a, a site that was doing urban legends by states. So I was like, well, I'm definitely going to find Pennsylvania. Of course, that's funny. I it's saw from the same Philly. thing. It's from Philly. Oh, and that's why I changed mine. I had no idea. See that twin telepathy. That really works. Yeah. So you read it. I did, but you go ahead. Back. Okay. Um, so it is. That's the ambiance, the scary music. <laughs> I've never heard of this before. Okay. Philadelphia. The bus to nowhere. Cinematic so, base. The story goes. I went like this. Because I was going to say, rumor has it. And I was like, now you're like a crib keeper. <laughs> the story goes. <laughs> okay. Cinematic base. Okay, so the story goes that there's this bus in Philly. 
and it doesn't have a route. And I mean, out of all the different buses in Philly, there's this one bus that's just driving around and it's kind of like this bus to nowhere. That's why they call it that. The urban legend goes that at your lowest point, you would stand outside in Philly waiting for a bus. And I don't know if you're really expecting the bus to come, but that's when this bus comes and picks you up. And when this bus picks you up, you'll sit down if you have changed to a 40. <laughs> 75 cents. Yeah. You're like, that's still how cheap it is to ride the bus? Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, that, yeah, drive you down so a dark alley. You're like, wait, this isn't the my same house. amount to ride a ghost bus? Ghostbusters! Oh. When you get on the bus, you, like I said, you're so fucking despaired and you're just sitting there, yeah. right? And there, there are other people on this bus and they're all doing the same thing. Oh, I didn't see that. And they're part. silent. Because they're all contemplating. I mean, isn't they're that contemplating like everything? Like, every bus. And apparently what the, the story says is like in that bus, when you're thinking of all these things, once you finally conclude whatever it is that you were thinking, I am a good person, or fuck that bitch. That's when the bus finally stops for you. Now here's the strange part. When you get off the bus, you could have been on the bus for just two minutes, or you could have been on the bus for years. Dun, dun, dun. The bus to nowhere. The lesson there is be thankful for what you have because then you might end up on the bus <laughs> <laughs> with the ragamuffin children. <laughs> so let's end this on a good note. The good feeling. So I, I'll go first since sure. you went first last time. Simpsons hit and run. Ooh. Oh, my brain is like, oh. <sighs> Guys, Grand Theft Auto. Simpsons hit and run. Neck and neck. Why? There was actually a lot of replay value. The storyline was fun. The gameplay was fun. The physics were actually ahead of its time. It was just an amazingly good fucking game. And here's my point. Y'all are remaking all these fucking games, Grand Theft Auto being one of them. And we have yet to get a remake of that game. You could build it from the bottom up or you can just, uh, what is the other? You have remakes Remastered. and then you have remasters. So you could just kind of like touch it up a little bit, but come on. Re-release the fucking game. I gotta play that game again. Honestly, there's not much touching up. Come on, what are we doing? Yeah. Come on, release it on fucking Game Xbox Pass. Xbox 2. Xbox One SX2. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, SSXX. It's tricky. Mm. That's another game people have been waiting for. Uh, yeah. I don't Let's know. do SSX Tricky, right? Is that how it is? SSX. Like, you want to throw it up there? Sex, sex, sex. We can have as many nostalgic references as we want. I don't give a fuck. I'm going off. Furbies. <laughs> Furbies. My thing was kind of a negative thing, but it is still nostalgic. I've realized that there is a, a fine line in nostalgia that it isn't just fantastic, but it's just old. And that is why it's appreciated. One of the things I realized was dial-up connection. Mm. Something we hate. I mean, hate till this day. You don't think about it and think, wow, I miss the days when we used to deal with. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Mom, are you? <laughs> Mom! We actually dealt with that. Like, so and so's on the internet. He's like, yeah, like you would try to log onto the internet and you would hear the person's conversation. Oh, like, yeah. If you were like, <laughs> it sounded like, like a fucking EVP. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, help. Get off the phone. You're grounded. <laughs> Interesting about that is, remember mom had that person that she worked with? She yes. had a manager. This yes. was back in like 2012. 2012. And it was dead ass. I'm telling you, zero people have dial-up connection at this point. And what her reasoning was, she was like, yeah, it's slow. It's like, so then why don't you just, okay. She's like, cause it's cheaper. Hey, there are still people paying for cable. That's like hundred fucking fifty dollars of worthlessness and commercials. Yeah. Yeah, you are gotta you get serious? Netflix, Prime, Hulu, all that, and then it adds up to hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. You fucking retard. Yeah, come on. And yes, I said that word. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm so sorry. On a good note, we are thankful for this show. We're very thankful for the people that are watching. Thankful for our families. Yes, and we hope a lot of them call us and try to invite us to a Thanksgiving dinner because that would be awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i need some flan i need some coquito mm -hmm. i need these some, are big facts i need some puerto rican hugs mm -hmm. i'm thankful for this show that we're able to do this show uh i am thankful for my son oh. and uh the mother of my son and i'm thankful for her children because they uh taught me patience
No, let me stop. <laughs> no, seriously though, I really am thankful for my whole family. My life is really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. so uh, with all that being said- And I'm very broke, so that says a lot. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're just ragamuffins just trying to get by and not get on that fucking bus. So. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 